Welcome back to the Odyssey. I am Mike Odyssey. And well, in this video, I'm going to go over some really cool updates inside the world of Nintendo that I think you might be interested in. And of course, the main topic for the day will be, well, the situation between Nintendo and the Yuzu emulator. I'm going to try to break it down as, you know, in a general sense so that everyone understands what exactly is going on and why this, this time it is very different from other times. Because I know emulators have been around for a long, long time but what makes this one so much more different and so much more important for the gaming industry? Let's go ahead and talk about it. But before, if you are new here, here is a little bit about me. And if you've already seen this, you can go ahead and use the timestamp below to skip to the news of your choice. So before we get into today's stories, you see, I want to ask you one thing. I want to ask for your subscription. You see, I'm legally blind and I'm basically losing my sight uh, as we go. I don't have sight on my left eye. And I have about 40% sight of my right eye. And it's just fading away, right? The doctors right now have nothing else they can do. But I have a dream to become a full-timer on YouTube by the end of this year. And I, I, I want to ask you for your help. Uh, if you subscribe to this channel right now, it'll only take a second. For me, it'll just change my life. So if you could do that right now, I would really appreciate it. Here we have Monday through Friday Nintendo news. On the weekends, we have products and reviews. And we also have the occasional in topic podcast with your favorite voice actor. So I would really appreciate it. It will mean the world to me. And I just want to thank you in advance for giving me your subscription. Let's move on to today's stories. Happy Leap Day, everyone. Happy birthday. If you have a birthday and Leap Day, it is finally your time to shine. It is really good to be inside the world of Nintendo. We have some exciting news. And I want to start with Biomutant is finally making it to Nintendo Switch. That game was announced way back and is finally making it to Nintendo Switch. I believe that it took so long because they were trying to build a port that from the ground up to make sure it runs well on Nintendo Switch. And I applaud this. So Biomutant is finally arriving on Nintendo Switch in May. Look out for that game. In other news, we have the Splatfest. Splatfest is happening and the theme is rock and roll. Now in this, you have three teams to choose from. We have drums, guitar, and keyboard, which is the instrument of your choice and which would you want to play Flatfest takes place on march 23rd and ending on march 21st which is a saturday and sunday i cannot decide whether to choose guitar and keyboard i can play both of them and i love both guitar and keyboard so hey it's up to you what you want to, what you want drums guitar or keyboard i myself don't know i'll let you know later on in other news fantastic news for square enix fans because guess what Chrono's Tigger is getting a remake, and the and it, Square Enix is actually interesting in knowing what fans would like to see in this remake, right? Would they like an uh, 8-bit kind of, you know, 3D kind of remake, or would they like the full-fledged next-gen remake? And if you ask me, I would love the latter, right? Because I want to see how these characters look now in, in this day's technology, how they made Final Fantasy Remake. I would love to see a Chronos Tigger remake just like that one. I just hope that it's just one game instead of them dividing in five games and trying to get as much money out of it as possible. But Chronos Tigger Remake, I am in all the way. Take my money. And that is it. In other news, we have uh, Sega acknowledging that Super Mario Wonder affected Sonic Superstar sales. I'm... Okay, so if you decide to release a game two days before a mario game of course it's gonna affect sales because hey mario is the unbeatable platform you cannot compete against if you want to get more sales you should have launched superstars maybe a month later or a month earlier but trying to compete with you know head to head with mario that is just a no no so i mean that and because super mario wonder was just an overall better game all right so let's move on to today's main story and well, it is a very sensitive topic and a very uh, touchy subject, but I wanted to do my best on explaining it so that both sides understand. When I mean both sides, I mean people who are for emulation and people who are just, they're, they're traditional. They just, they just want to buy their games on Switch and they're on the side of Nintendo when it comes to the lawsuit because right now what's happening is that Nintendo is suing the creators of the emulator Yuzu. What is the emulator Yuzu? 
the emulator Yuzu is a emulator that it emulates Nintendo Switch games. Okay, and well, why has Nintendo decided to sue Yuzu now? Because Nintendo has now all of the proof; they have all of the elements they need to make a claim that Yuzu has al allowed allowed Nintendo Switch games to be played on other systems or 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 you know been used on their emulator illegally okay and well in this video i'm going to go ahead and try to explain it in a way that everyone can understand right even people who know emulation and to those who don't know emulation i want to do my best to try to explain to you what exactly is going on okay and this is not a a, a, a video to divide but this is more to unite in one understanding and so we can better understand what is really going on so this is the thing emulation itself and i want to start with this is not illegal emulation itself is not illegal that's the first thing i want to say because it's never been illegal there are no laws in place that will prevent people from emulating games right now what is illegal is breaking uh companies terms of use right a company's terms of use is a contract that the company makes with the user that they will use said software or a product in only the specific way that it is meant to be used by the company, right? And when we as 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 uh, users we break that contract, then it becomes a legal thing, right? If we break a contract, a contract is legally binding, and if we don't uh, we don't we don't go with the contract then we are at fault right and now why is it now that this applies to yuzu well yuzu in order to use that software or that emulator it needs to break the contract it needs to violate the terms and conditions Without violating the terms and condition, without breaking the contract set by users and Nintendo, then it cannot, like, it cannot show the games. It cannot run the games on the emulator, right? Nintendo, for the first time, they're adding extra security measures to their games, starting with Nintendo Switch. I remember we covered this patent on, we, we covered the patent here for that security measure when the first Switch came out. And so, because of this now nintendo has for the first time since emulators were created president they have proof they have they have the smoking gun how they call it right in order to sue and that's the reason nintendo's decided to sue now and not then because now they have the proof now let me explain to you guys and break it down what the proof is okay because a lot i know a lot of you are upset and they want to know, but what, 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 what's different now? What did Nintendo do, or what did user do that is allowing Nintendo to be able to sue them and not sue everybody else? Well, Nintendo decided to overprotect or even add extra layers of protection to their games, and then on top of that, they added the contract that if these layers were broken, then it would violate, and it'll actually be a legal thing, right? It'll violate their terms and condition. Okay, and why are contracts in place, guys? Contracts in place are in place because we, we as consumers, we really don't own games. We are licensed to own the games. For example, Nintendo gives us the permission to, to, to hold a game, but that software, or that game really belongs to Nintendo. And Nintendo, at any point in time, if you ever break the game, if you ever do something you're not supposed to, they could take that license away. That's why we have banned Nintendo accounts, right? We have people who have been banned from 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 Nintendo Switch Online or banned from Nintendo. Period. On the and they have break break systems because they have violated the terms of use. Did you know that the Yuzu um, emulator cannot work without breaking those rules? And this is because in Switch games, Nintendo decided to add a key to every game right a, a key to every single game or, or a key to every single system that will allow it to play those games it's nintendo's way of saying you know here is a big giant 
um, you know, like a, like a uh, barrier here that I only have the password and I can let you pass. If you try to make up the password, or try to mimic it or do something illegal, then you, I, I, you, you can't play the games, right? And so the user emulator, because it is made for the Nintendo Switch and the other emulator, I think Riot Jinx you, they cannot be used without breaking the terms of use and conditions, which is a contract set by Nintendo and the user. They need this key and therefore they themselves don't provide the key because it is illegal, but on their website, they teach you how to find a key illegally right which is a no-no and that's the smoking gun right there them having an emulator that needs this key that you can only obtain illegally okay and the and the key itself has a contract within it that you can only use it with nintendo hardware you cannot use it with any other nintendo uh any other system right any other system nintendo is a first party company with their first party software and that first party software is only meant to be played on nintendo systems right and this basically was even more implemented with the switch and you know i could tell you that nintendo was actually looking for a way to stop emulation as a whole but they were able to to find a way to kind of set a trap with the nintendo switch because they added extra layers that if somebody broke it, they knew right away that it was broken. And so the emulators for Nintendo Switch cannot, cannot perform without these keys. And well, set emulation companies are providing ways or not providing themselves, but they're providing information on how to get these keys. Not only that, but they are also providing information on how to break Nintendo systems in order to run games illegally, right? You can add as many games as you want to the system. And so breaking the system is actually against Nintendo terms of use and conditions. Breaking the, the key for the games is also, again, Nint against Nintendo terms and conditions. And also breaking the software, you know, or decrypting the software is also against Nintendo's um, terms and conditions. Now, that is the only basis that is... The, the only thing they need to prove a case, okay? But on top of that, to make it even crazier, you know, Nintendo, when Breath of the Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom released, a million copies were downloaded before the, 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 the date of release, and they were played on these emulators, on Yuzu and on the Rai, whatever, Jing something, right? They were played on this these systems, and so Nintendo also has the base, all right, that that they've actually in, they encountered damages, all right, because guess what? Tears of the Kingdom also needs a key in order to perform, and you cannot play Tears of the Kingdom without that key on a user emulator or the other one. So there is, again, precedence that, that these games were being played on these only emulators that actually work for Switch, and the keys were being used, therefore allowing Nintendo to, to get damages, right? Millions and millions and millions of dollars in damages. And Nintendo is also suing for damages. Not only damages on Tears of the Kingdom, but now every damage for every Nintendo Switch game. I said Nintendo Switch game because they're specifically talking about the Nintendo Switch because that's where... They added the extra measures, the extra rules, the extra regulations. They, they, they added the extra keys and, and, and encryptions. And so they have a case, you know. Unfortunately for Yuzu, for Yuzu, they have a case. Now, I don't think this will affect emulation from the past. I think this will affect emulation moving forward, okay? And, well... A software company that develops a software and they create a, 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 a contract so that people can use that said software as long as they go about and they agree to the contract and they do nothing to to violate the contract then you know they can continue to use that software and now more than ever in this digital age 
digital contracts need to be very reinforced and followed, right? It is a law. And so, yeah, um, I, I hope that you guys understood what is happening. You know, this 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 all is this is all starting with the Nintendo Switch moving forward because Nintendo decided to implement extra measures to these the, the to these systems to these software in order to catch piracy. Piracy is not a good thing, and it harms the gaming industry. Piracy is the number one reason why we are we are losing or we are about to lose physical games. And as long as piracy exists, that is only a, a, a nail in the coffin for physical games, which we all love and adore because at least we have that tangible with us where we can collect them, right? Therefore, the, the reason why we're, 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 we're moving from physical to digital is because of piracy because because it, companies are losing so much money and they're investing and you might say well but nintendo is a mega giant of a company they have a lot of money well you have to understand that they hire thousands and thousands and thousands of people around the world that are dedicated and 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 you know to and committed to giving you the best games they have jobs they have benefits they have salaries they have families and so every employee for Nintendo is a multi-million dollar contract because not only do, does Nintendo have to provide for that employee for 20, 30 years until retirement, but they also have to provide health insurance, not only for that employee, but also for their children. And if you live in the United States, you know how, how expensive health insurance is to get, you know, and in other countries, of course, we have countries that health insurance is free and I wish it were here. But you know how, how how expensive it is to even have an employee if you are a business owner. So that's what's happening with Yuzu and Nintendo. Nintendo has a solid case against Yuzu, and this will drastically change the atmosphere when it comes to emulation. And not only that, but you know, it moves forward the end of the physical era with video games. All right, my friends, let me know if you have any questions and you want to clarify uh, the situation. I can talk to you below in the, in the description. Let's all be respectful with this subject because I know there's a lot of tension in the air when it comes to emulation. So if you have an opinion, if you have a subject, make sure go ahead and share it. I want to hear from you, but make sure that you do so in a respectful manner. And we can continue this conversation down below. Thank you guys so much for watching. Before I let you go, never give up and journey on. Peace.